This video is the start of a brand new section called functions. So let's just quickly have a look at what is the definition of a function. So functions are self-contained modules of code that accomplish a specific task. They usually take in data, process it, and then return a result. Once a function is written, it can be used over and over and over again. Functions can be called from the inside of other functions. Use functions to organize your code, very important, and break code into smaller pieces and make it reusable means to also use it over and over again. Then some confusion comes in when we look at the main method here, because they said the main function is a predefined method in Dart. The method acts as an entry point to the application and the Dart script needs a main method for execution. So we call this main there a method. But they also refer to it as being a function. So uh, please do not get confused when I call this a method. Uh, you can actually call it a function also. But the definition and dot for a method and a function, a method basically belongs to a class. So when we get to classes and objects later on, you'll understand the difference between methods and functions. But a method basically belongs to objects of a class, whereas functions do not. So we will start off with functions, and when we're doing classes later on, we will start building methods. And methods and functions are really used interchangeably in most programming languages so that people don't even know the difference between them. But if you want to know the difference, basically, methods belongs to a class, functions do not belong to a class. But we'll see that when we get to classes and objects. So for now, we will just be working with functions. But I will refer to this function there called main. I will refer to it as the main method. Right, so let's look at a very simple function. So I'm going to create a function here at the bottom. And you can see it's outside of my main method now. So you'll see the main method starts with void, which means this function or method do not return any value. It will just do something. And as we've seen here, this method acts as the entry point of your application. So that's what it what it's doing. It's the entry point. Then you can see there's the name for the method or the function. And then there's some brackets and then another set of brackets. So it's round brackets and this one is curly brackets. So it's the same thing we're going to do here. We're going to give this function a name. So Normally, your name should be descriptive of what it's going to do. So I'm going to name this one print hello world and have my set of curly braces. So it's the same as we've got here. There's the name of the function. There's some opening and closing round brackets. And then we've got this curly brackets. And what I want to do in here is just to go and say print hello world. So you can see that this method is descriptive of what it's doing. I'm saying print hello world and it's printing hello world. Okay, so just one thing to note here is that normally when we create variable names as well as function or method names, they must be descriptive. And also you can see we start off with a lowercase and then every subsequent word's first letter will be capitalized. And that's the same for variables. We can have a variable called customer name. Uh, let's say Peter. So I've declared this variable exactly the same way. And it's also descriptive of what the variable will be doing or what the variable will be holding. So normally when we declare variables, we make use of nouns. And when we declare functions or methods, we make use of verbs because they are doing something and these are storing something. So let's see how we can use this function now. So I can just go into the main method there and I can call print hello world. And that's all I need to do. And if I run it, you will see it's going to print out hello world. So my program starts inside of the main method. And inside of the main method, I call a function called print hello world. Print hello world will activate and it will print out hello world. And you can see another type of function that we have there is the print function. So the print function takes in a value, whereas print hello world did not take in a value. So that's the next method we will, or the next function that we will look at. And that's one that can actually take in a value. So that's what the print function is actually doing. It's taking in a value and then printing something to the console. Right, so this is a very basic function. Let's look at a bit more. 
right, I'm going to delete this line, but I'll, I'll keep the function at the bottom. So let's say we've got a customer name. Um, and we also have a customer age. And the customer age will be, let's say, 50. So let's say we want to work out some discount for this customer. So we're going to say if the customer age is greater than or equal 60, and then we know this guy is a pensioner, and he can get some discount. So we will just print out something like, let's add the guy's uh, name there. So it's customer name, comma, you will get, and let's just say 80 Rand discount. And then we'll put an else there, or else if, else if uh, the customer age is less than 10, we know it's a kid, so we will also give him some discount. And I'm going to print out the same thing again. I can print out, you will get, let's say, 20 Rand discount. And then the else part there will be, you will get no discount. So if we run this quickly, you'll see that Peter, you will get no discount. But if I make this, let's say, 70, I will get 80 Rand discount. And if I make it less than 10, I will get 20 Rand discount. So let's say now this changes. We get another customer now. So I'm just going to remove the declarations there and make another customer. Let's say it's Paul now, and Paul is... 34 years old and now we want to do the same thing again so I'm going to copy that lines of code and I'm going to paste it here and run it and I will get the same type of output Peter you will get 20 dollars 20 Rand discount because Peter is less than 10 but Paul will get no discount because he's 34 so whenever you see in your application that you are repeating lines of code you should probably be creating a function for those lines of code not in all cases but most cases, you will need to go and create a function. So you can see I'm repeating this part there again. So this means I can go and create a function that can help me out here. So let's go and create the function at the bottom. Actually, let's do it uh, above print hello world there. So again, I'm going to say void. And let's call this one print customer discount. Right, so this one will work a bit differently now because we need to have some value sent to this function in order to actually do something with it. So what I want to send through is I want to use the customer's name and I want to test for the age there, customer age, against 60 and 10. So I'll need to pass through the customer age and the customer name. So let's say in here we're going to accept a string as the customer's name and I'm going to accept an integer as the customer's age. So this function is still not returning anything. It's got void there. It's not returning back a value. Void means not returning something back. And after this, we'll see at something that can actually return a value. And there is the name of the function, print customer discount. And we are accepting a name and an age. And then I can take this part of coding now. I'm just going to cut it from there and print it or paste it in here. And you can see now that I can use the name and the age here. So instead of saying customer age, I'll say age. Instead of saying customer name there, I'll say name. Instead of saying customer age there, I'll use the age again. Customer name, just name. And customer name, just name. So it's just different variable names, but it's still doing the same thing. So if the age is greater than or equal 60, I will still print out this and so forth. So let's just format this one quickly. All right, let's go back to the function there. Okay, so we are receiving in a name. That name will go into there, there, and there. And the age will go there, there. So how do we use this function now? So I'm going to remove this part also that we said was a duplicate of code. So now you can see our coding looks a lot less now but we still haven't done what we've done previously. So we need to call this function. So how do I call this function? Just as the previous one, you just use it. So I'm going to say print customer discount. And you can see if I put nothing in the bracket, it's actually telling me 
there's two positional arguments expected, but there's none found, which means I need to pass in the name and the age. So I'm going to pass in firstly the name and then the age. Please note the sequence here. First the name, then the age. So I'm going to pass in customer in the brackets. Customer name. And the second one is the customer age. And then the error should disappear. So I'm passing in the customer name there and I'm passing in the customer age. So Peter will go into customer age, which will pass into name. So name will basically contain Peter now. And then we will print out Peter. You will get the discount. Okay, and then the same for the age. That customer age gets passed in there, which will go into that age variable there. And that's the age we will use, which will be the 7. Now let's do exactly the same for this one, for Paul. And you can see again we pass in customer name and customer age. So we pass in Paul and 34 and it will print out. So let's run and see if we get the same print on that we had there. You can see nothing changed. It's the exact same printout. But look at my main method now. My main method now is a lot smaller, a lot less code. So we have organized our code or break down our code into smaller pieces. So I've taken the smaller piece there, put it aside made a function of it and now I can use it inside of the main method. Now let's just look at the last type of function that you can get here and that is a value returning function. So you can see that these two functions both started with void just as your main method there at the top. It starts with void which means these functions will not return back a value. It will just do something like we did there. Just printed out something. But we can also have functions and methods that return back values. So let's say we want to work out the discount and then send through the discount. So we want to send out uh, the 80 and the 20 or the 0 for no discount. So in order to do that, if I want to send back the discount, start the function out with int instead of void. So whatever you want to return back is what your type will be at the front. So I'm going to say, I want to return back an int. If I say void, it's basically returning nothing. So int, I'm going to return an int. What are we going to call this function? Let's call it calculate discount. So again, you can see it needs a name, the return type, a name, and then something in the, in the brackets. So for now, we can just say return a zero there just to get this error gone. So basically, you need to have an int there at the front if you want to return an integer, the name of the function, and then something you take in as arguments. And then there must be a return statement right at the end of your function that returns a value which is the same type as that you said it will be returning there. Now, what do we need to calculate the discount? We actually just need the age. So I'm going to say int age there. So how do I use it? I can say int discount equals calculate discount and I pass in the age. So let's say I pass in 70 there. And then I can print it out discount. And if we run it now, because this function is returning a zero, it will print out the discount as a zero. So you can see because this is a value returning function, it will return the value to a variable in this case. So if you use the equal sign there, it will return back that value and it will pass it into the discount variable. Right, we'll come back to this and also see how we can how we can call it also maybe inside the print method and so forth or inside the print function. Right, so let's quickly complete this one. We can basically do the same that we did here with the if statements. So I'm going to copy these if statements and let's just format it quickly. Okay, so we've got some problems there with print, and I'm not going to say print there. I'm going to delete that print statement. I'm going to delete this print statement, and I'm going to delete this print statement. So what I want to do is to start off with a discount at the top. So I'll say, let's say int discount, and then if the age is greater than or equal 60, 60, we will say discount equals 80. And here we will say discount equals 
20. And then here we will say discount equals zero. Right, so you can see that we start off with just declaring discount, not having a value. But if the age is greater than 60, the discount will be 80. If the else is great, less than 10, the discount will be 20. Else, if it's not true for any one of those, the discount will be zero. And now instead of returning zero there, I will return whatever is saved in that discount variable. So if I run this now, an age of 70 is greater than or equal 60 and the discount will be 80. So it prints out 80. Right, so this is a value returning function. It can accept something, work out something with the value that you passed in, and then return a value. But very important, this type, can you see it's int, must be the same type as that you return at the top. Now we can also use this calculate discount function inside of a print statement. So let's take away that one there and just run it now. And you can see it still prints out exactly the same thing. So this means that I can even do calculations with it. So let's take the customer, or let's let's just declare something here. Let's say int price equals 10. And I want to add or subtract the discount. So let's, let's make it 200. So I can in here say price minus calculated discount and run it. So the discount for a person of 70 years old will be 80. And 200 minus 80 will give me the 120 there. So you can even use it in calculations somewhere. Because it's returning a value, it will basically replace this statement there with that value it returns. So it's replacing it with 80 in this case. So it's with price minus 80 will give you 120. So you can either assign it like this or use it in other cases where you directly use the value. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.